I have an amazing video for you today. Let me just say that right off the bat. Because the entries to this year's Foldable Flight Paper Airplane Designers Contest were absolutely mind-blowing. They were mind-blowing. There are so many good paper airplane designers in this community. I am absolutely impressed. I'm just so impressed. So originally, I had planned to award just three grand prize winners for this contest, but there were too many worthy submissions. So in this video, I'm going to announce three honorable mentions and teach you how to fold them, as well as announcing those grand prize winners, which will come at the end of this video. So let's start with those honorable mentions. Our first honorable mention goes to the Sienna by Jago P. And honestly, of all the paper airplanes in this competition, this plane probably flies the best. It locks together in a three-dimensional shape and just wait until you see the flight test for this plane. The glide ratio is absolutely absurd. It is so good. We next have the Swifter by Jared Ong Hong Hao, and this is just an easy plane to fold that boomerangs very consistently. It is an extremely consistent boomerang plane, and that's something that is very hard to achieve, so I really appreciate both its simplicity and its performance. And finally, we have the Walloping Cebu by Carson Acosta. And if Carson Acosta is a familiar name to you, that is because he was a finalist in last year's competition as well. So congratulations, Carson, on being a consistently great designer. I love your planes. And this locks together in its three-dimensional shape and just flies really well. So I'm about to teach you how to fold all of these planes, and then I'm going to announce the grand prize winners to this year's contest. All you will need in order to fold the Sienna by Jago P is an eight and a half by 11 or A4 sheet of paper. And we're going to begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. And now you can go ahead and open that up and you're going to fold this top edge to the left edge and your crease should go right through this top left corner. And then while you have it in this position here, look for the point where this crease intersects this edge. And you want to start folding right at that point. And you're going to fold this whole edge down to land along the center. And of course you don't yet have a center crease on this top layer, so look for your center crease down here as you line this up. And crease it just like that. Then you'll go ahead and open that up and open it all the way up to this position. And now you're going to fold the top edge to this right edge and your crease should go through the top right corner. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing where we're folding this section to land on the center crease and you're starting right where this crease here intersects this diagonal edge. And then just swing that into place so that this edge lands on your center crease. Like so. And then you can go ahead and open it all the way back to here. And uh, basically I want you to look for this crease here and this crease here. Not your bottom diagonal creases. There are two creases just above these. And basically you're going to fold in on one of those. And then reverse this crease right here that lands along your center crease. So with it in this position, I'm just pushing back 
along that crease right there and reversing it. And then I can just lay this whole pocket down like this. And it should be folding on the other crease that's the same shape as this over here. And now we can stand this flap up in the center and squash fold it. And that should crease along these existing creases, but it's going to reverse each of them. And your paper should look like this. Now we'll go ahead and swing this to the left and fold this to the center. Push that to the right, the other one to the right as well, and do the same thing on this side where we're folding to the center. And now push this flap back to the left. At this point, you want to notice each of these points down here at the bottom and fold them up as far as they go, landing the point on the center crease. And then we're going to actually reverse those creases and tuck them in behind. But actually, wait just a moment. We're going to open this up first, and we're going to fold this edge here to that crease right there, or that edge there. and close that up. And now you can close this side up, tucking that in behind on the existing crease. And on this side, fold the edge here to the center. So you're not opening up the flap, you're leaving it like this. Fold this to the center edge or center crease. And now you can tuck this little triangle behind using its existing crease that you've already made. Okay. And now we're ready to fold our plane in half. And basically the idea here is we've got this tab that can fold into this pocket on the other side. So as we close this up, you want to tuck that tab into that pocket. Just like so, all the way up to the front and then close it all the way up. And now when we fold our wings, we want our wing crease to start right at this point at the front of the plane. And basically I'm folding along, you can see this edge in the center of the plane. I'm folding my wing crease right along that edge. Okay, and having done one side, I'm going to just flip it over and fold my other wing to match. And now that my plane looks like this, we are almost finished. All I have to do is set it upside down. And I want to fold winglets parallel to this center crease. And so they're not going to be that big, about this size. And I'm just estimating what appears to be parallel. Something right about like that. And once I do one side, I'll put the plane in this position and I can fold the other side to match. Okay, and so this is a finished plane, but you're definitely going to want just a bit of up elevator. And this is an interesting balance. This plane wants to dive down just slightly when you throw it. So you definitely need some up elevator to counteract that. But if you get too much up elevator, it's really going to stall. It's a little bit touchy. It glides beautifully if you get it uh, trimmed correctly, but you're going to have to experiment with the amount of up elevator that's required for that because there's a, a sweet spot, and if you're on either side of the sweet spot, it might dive or it might stall. But assuming you get it dialed in correctly, this is an excellent paper airplane, so good luck flying. All you will need in order to fold the Swifter by Jared Ong Hung Hao is a square sheet of paper, and you can see mine is six by six inches. I happen to think that is a great size for this plane, but feel free to cut your eight and a half by 11 down to an eight and a half square or your A4 paper into a square. Those work great as well. And once you have your square, we're going to begin by folding this right edge to the left edge. And then you'll go ahead and open your paper up and fold your top edge to the bottom edge, but just make a little pinch crease. 
and just want you to be able to easily identify where the center of your paper is. And now we're going to fold the top edge down and leave a little bit of a gap between this edge and the center crease. And of course, the size of that gap is going to change based on the size of the square you're using. But fortunately, we're not gonna make a specific measurement here because a wide range, you know, if I fold it there, it's gonna be fine. If I fold it closer to the center crease, that's going to be fine. A wide range of estimations works here. So as long as it looks something like that, you are in good shape. And then we're going to flip the paper over and now fold this top edge to the center crease. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And now we'll go ahead and flip this over and we want to fold this top triangle down right along that bottom edge. Flip the paper back over and you can see we have these pockets here. Basically, I'm going to force one of those open and kind of start to squash it like this. And before I place my creases, I'm going to flip the paper over and I want to line this little crease up there with the crease on this top layer. And once I've done that, I can place the paper down and flatten that out. And there's a layer here that needs to be flattened and creased as well on the other side. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So I'm opening this pocket up and beginning to flatten it. But before I actually do, I look on this side and line my creases up and then I can flatten it like so. And now I'm going to swing this triangle forward again and fold this in as far as it will go. Fold this in like so. And then we're going to fold this triangle back down on the same crease it was folded on previously. And now I'm just going to fold the plane in half. And I want to fold my wings just starting a little bit above this point here. And this crease should be parallel to the bottom crease of the plane. And having done one side, I just flip it over, fold the other side to match. And now I'll go ahead and fold this little edge up to form a winglet. The measurements here are not precise. And we'll do the same thing over here. And your plane should look like this. And now we just have one step left and that is to look for where this crease, the wing crease, intersects the back edge. And that's one reference point. And then fold this up kind of like this. You're just estimating how far forward you're taking that crease. And then you're going to inside reverse fold right along that, reversing this inside. just like so, and you should end up with a tail like that. So now you want to make sure that everything sits nice and uh, symmetrically. You can see often the tail wants to lean in, the, in one direction because you folded it to one side and not the other. So just make sure your tail is vertical in the center and you really don't need to make any adjustments like up elevator or anything this should fly in a circle for you just by tilting it sideways and throwing it in a banked angle, it should swoop back to you like this. And if you bank it in that direction, it'll swoop back to you like that. So with all that said, good luck flying your plane. All you will need in order to fold the Walloping Cebu by Carson Acosta is an eight and a half by 11 or a four sheet of paper. And we're going to begin by folding this right edge to the left edge. As always, symmetry is important, so try very hard to line up your corners as you make this crease, like so. And then we'll go ahead and open that up and fold your top edge now to the bottom edge.
Open that up and fold your top edge to the crease you just made. Unfold that and flip your paper over and now gather this top crease between your thumb and forefingers and pull it down to your bottom horizontal crease. And when you line that up, you can crease kind of through this top layer and crease down on the layers behind. And now you can fold your top edge to this edge here. At this point, go ahead and open that up and fold your top edge to this horizontal crease. Now the next step is to flip the paper over and we want to fold this edge here to land on the center crease, like so but we're going to be kind of looking at some reference points on the other side of the paper. So be sure you kind of put your finger right here where this edge is intersecting the center crease and begin your fold. And then look on this side of the paper, you can see you have a crease right here that is in alignment with this edge here. And you can kind of try to land that crease right along your center crease. Make sure that the new crease you're making goes right through the intersection of this crease and this horizontal crease there, and then land this horizontal crease on that edge there. And once you do that, you can open your paper up and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and with your paper like this, go ahead and flip right along this crease that's on the center crease, that to the left, collapse this in, and flatten the paper like so. Okay, and now we're going to kind of lift each of these flaps outward just enough that you can kind of collapse the paper then into this shape. So looking from the top, you kind of have or sorry, looking from this side, you have like this rectangle. And from the front, you have this shape, which is tucked onto either side of the paper, like so. And with the paper in this position here, I'm going to fold right along this existing crease and just extend that crease through this section there, right like so. I'll unfold that, do the same thing on this side. And now I'm going to bring this section here around. So I'm looking at this whole triangle here and I want to pull this uh, top edge of the triangle here to land right on the point of the triangle. And you'll see you actually have a crease right here that you're just going to fold along. And as you do that, you can collapse each side in and then you just have to make short little creases right there. and then you can fold this left section back behind. And you'll see this is going to form the nose lock of the plane. It's going to lock everything together in a three-dimensional shape. So now we're going to fold, kind of pull this whole section down to where that nose lock is as far as it can go. And then you want to land this front edge right where this edge here intersects the bottom edge. So there's my front reference. Here's my other reference, and I just crease right like that. And now I can flip the paper over and just fold this side to match the first side. Now I'm going to fold back up, and this is going to actually go across this kind of leading edge of the plane because I'm folding from this point here to that same reference point where this edge meets the bottom edge of the plane. Should look just like that. And then you can flip the paper over and fold this side to match.
and now fold the section that crosses this edge here back across that edge. And flip the paper over, do the same thing on this side. And now open up this whole thing like this and you'll see you've got this crease here and you actually need to reverse that crease which is going to require you to kind of burnish this front section where the creases are thick or the layers are thick and then kind of work it in the opposite direction and then this back section should be pretty easy. So you should be able to lay this layer down like this and the idea here is you might even want to curl this layer. We're going to be tucking this layer here into this pocket when we close up on this crease here. So you're closing on that crease and then tucking this in behind to this pocket right here. And that's a little bit tricky. It fits tightly into that space, but you can kind of just get it sliding into place. And then once you have it in there, you can kind of just massage this back into a flat position. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So we've got to open that up burnish these front layers where they're so thick and bent in the wrong direction and then reverse that crease just like so and now tuck this tab into this front pocket and gently massage the paper until it likes to sit flat again and your plane should look like this and you can see you've got that lock in the front and we're ready now to fold from this top edge of the lock straight back parallel to the bottom edge. So we're folding our wings at this point. And the way you make sure that you're parallel, and be careful too, if you pull too hard on this front, you can tear this out. And you can see I've maybe torn it just a little bit already. So you gotta be really careful. Maybe start just above the nose lock. You really don't wanna tear it. And you're going to have to really curl these thick, thick layers at the front and then line this up so that this edge here lands on that edge below it. And that's going to make sure that you're parallel to the bottom edge of the paper. So it should look like that. You can see my crease there. And once you do one side, of course, you can just hold it in this orientation and fold the other side to match. Curling those thick layers before you try to hone in on the correct placement of your crease. And like so, we will flatten it. And now, with the paper or the plane in this orientation, it's time to fold this outer edge to this crease here. And you're landing it at the bottom of kind of that central keel of the plane. Do the same thing on the other side. Open both of those up and now fold your outer edges to the creases you just made. Just like so. And now we need to set the wing angles. So I like to set the innermost sections so that they have a bit of dihedral, they're angled upward. And then the sections next, these here should angle down just slightly. And then the outermost sections you can either have be kind of perpendicular to the ground, so pointing straight down, or you can angle them in just a little bit. The other thing you wanna do is you need to give this plane a bit of up elevator. So go ahead and just bend the back edges of your wings up slightly. Uh, whether you're folding from A4 or eight and a half by 11, this is definitely going to need a little bit of up elevator and that should help your plane fly well. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching and good luck flying your plane. And now that you've had fun folding our honorable mentions from this year's contest, it is time to announce the grand prize winners for the foldable flight paper airplane designers contest for 2021. And here they are. Our first grand prize winner is Kitty Hawk by Will Barron. Look at this paper airplane. Look at how aerodynamic that is. It is absolutely astonishing. This is a LaFosse lock in the middle, which holds it in a three-dimensional shape, but he came up with this very clever windshield, which 
makes it even more aerodynamic than it would be otherwise, and it flies beautifully. Next up, we have Anaconda by Ethan Wong. There were so many good jets submitted this year, but none of them were quite as cool, in my opinion, as this one. Look at those awesome canards and the shape of this fin, and it actually flies quite well also. And finally, we have F-11D Blackwing by Evan Bruss, which is just so cool. Look at those fins, and the way this flies is actually really satisfying as well. It does a lot of backflips and stunts. Just an excellent paper airplane. I was absolutely enthralled with each of these, and I'm honored to be able to feature them on my channel. Congratulations to the grand prize winners of this year's contest. I was absolutely astonished by the quality of your submissions. I'll be featuring each of your planes in individual tutorials on this channel. And of course, I will be designing templates for those planes, which you, the winners, will gain access to in addition to my patrons on Patreon. Congratulations also to the honorable mentions that were featured in this video. I really, really loved your submissions, and I hope that the viewers today were able to enjoy them as much as I have. And thank you also to everyone who participated in this year's contest. I was really, really impressed with the quantity, but especially the quality of this year's submissions. So thank you for watching this video, and keep your eyes peeled for those individual tutorials which will be coming up as soon as I'm able to make them. I'll see you next time.